Hi everybody, Lydia here with Build Show Network and today we're going to talk all about boxes, running some. Um, I do have a more in-depth video further back talking about them and everything and how they work, but I'm going to briefly go over some things really quick before we get them on the wall. So this is a 12 inch, this is the North Star Multi-Box um, or Multi-One. This one has a fixed back, so as you can see here, this back is fixed. You can choose to run springs or not on these boxes. All the springs do is keep the door popping out on a fixed back box. This one's pretty cool because you can remove this blade housing here and you can run it either as a 12 or a 14, depending on what you want. So this just clips off here and this blade housing comes off and a new one goes on. Our dial settings are here. These adjust how much mud is coming out. This one has a really nice crown. So at zero, it's gonna be putting on a lot of mud all the way up to five, which is gonna be the least amount of mud because as we change that dial, it changes how much pressure is coming and then moves that plate forwards. Our blade is right here, which we also wanna be checking, making sure there's no nicks, damages, and that it's set mm, about that far. I don't even know how to explain that. Just a, little, just a little ways out from that housing right there because the blade is what's trailing the box. You do not wanna be having to come back and be trailing your boxes with skimming blades. If you are overfilling or your blades aren't set right, don't be trailing them. It's pretty much negating everything that you're using the box for. So make sure you're taking the time to check your blades, get your settings correct, and then you're not overfilling your joints. So you're not having to then take all that extra time and be running behind it with a skimming blade. These should be leaving a pretty close to glass finish, especially when you're getting to those upper coats. So what we typically do is we do a 10, and then we 12, and then if there's some bad, um, there's some bad shoulders or we're doing a smooth wall, we'll then follow with a 14. 12 usually is about the highest you're gonna to need to go. You can split your butts with 12s. You can run down the center of your butts with 12s. You can break out bad shoulders. 14 is really nice too, but most of the time we're just using these two sizes right here. You can also box corner B with boxes. Um, most of them, they have these wheels right here. You can just put these wheels on the corner or the edge of the corner bead and then just run the box down. You do need to be aware though, if you're running metal, you will start to get nicks and it will wear your blade down a lot faster. So it can be fast for metal, but just make sure you're keeping track and you're keeping care of your tools. Um, this is the level five, 10. This one has a floating back. So as you can see, this back moves. You need to be running springs on floating backs. If you don't have springs on, the back's gonna fall out. So depending on the box, will depend a lot on your springs. Same thing here, it's springs, pull the box back out. Um, same settings, zero all the way to five. This one doesn't have quite as much of a crown. It's starting to get pretty worn down, so we do need to do um, you know, some repair and some maintenance on this guy, but they both run pretty much the same way. You've got your mud goes in here, you push on the box, comes out the top and then the blade trails behind. So, oh yeah, and another very important thing, handle. So the handle goes on the back of the box. Okay, so we close the box, put the tabs down, so the box back doesn't open up anymore. And then the handle, I've seen a lot of people do this wrong, it's gonna slide, gonna slide like this. And then you're going to tighten your nuts down. Okay. So we're holding this should be like this. You don't want to flip it the other way and have your handle facing the other way. Because what we do when we run this is we go like this. So we're going to be running like that and pushing with our body. So that's how you want to have your box handle set. Those little U's go in there. You tighten that down. You can also hit in with the end of your knife if you want them a little bit tighter. Sometimes they tend to back out, but... Um, that's how you properly install a box handle. So let's go ahead and get some mud going. We're also gonna grease these boxes up and uh, get some mud on the walls. Is that enough?
So we do spray the back seal before we start. This one's not oiled up, but when we are using these, we're using a silicone safe spray. These are like silicone seals. So if you're using a real cheap spray, it will eventually erode your seals and then your seals won't be good and you'll have some leaking. And another thing, we are using a pump with a box filler. So this little square part, it usually comes extra with a pump. Um, you can buy the pump and then you gotta buy the gooseneck and then the box filler. Sometimes they come with them, sometimes they don't. So be careful when you are buying. This is the box filler. It has that real thin nose right there so it fits right in the box. And I'm gonna have Ryan be running the box today. So he's gonna be running it. I'm gonna be explaining what's going on. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill one correctly. And then we're gonna overfill a flat. And I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. And we're gonna talk about checking and running the boxes properly. So, so when we're filling the box, Number one, you want to make sure you have equal mud around your pump and then you're going to just go ahead and put that in there and there's kind of like a little stop or two. It'll just kind of stop on its own so you're not going to like jam the box in too far. And then you're just going to evenly move it across. So as you can tell, there's an even amount of mud that's filled in there. And then when we push on the box, it's going to make the mud come out. So when we're looking at a handle, it has a brake down here and the brake controls where the box stays. So that's braked, that's not what the brake. So when you're boxing, you wanna have your brake on and you wanna make sure you're at the right angle before you get up to the wall or the ceiling. Um, make sure you don't have your fingers in there and we've all pinched our hands about a bazillion times. So Ryan here, he has his hand on the brake, his box is set, he's got a hand there and he's got a hand back here. This handle's really nice because it's perfect for eight foot. So now he's gonna be pushing and pushing the box in. So go ahead. So as he's walking, he's pushing, and that's making the mud come out of the box. And so now we're gonna go back, and we're gonna check, and we're gonna make sure that this is filling correctly. This is our first coat. I think a lot of people sometimes just overfill their first and then come back and fix it later. We're not gonna wanna see a ton of mud here. We're covering the tape, but we also wanna leave room for our consecutive coats. So. What we do is we put the knife up, we check, we're gonna look, make sure there's a little space there. We don't wanna be crazy overfilling. We don't wanna have a hump. Um, we also don't wanna be super under either. So, I yeah, I was gonna say, this could definitely take some more mud. So we ran it on a three, which I always tell people start with a three and then adjust between a two or a four. So this needs more. So we'll go ahead and run it on a two now and Ryan's gonna run back there. So let's go ahead and check the two now. Okay, that's much better. So as you can tell here, we're checking and we're making sure that's still a little too much space. It could definitely take a one. So this is on a two, there's a little space there. The 12 has more of a crown than the 10 does and it's been leaving a lot more mud. So what we're gonna do is you kind of have to adjust with how your tools are running. We're gonna leave this there at that two and then when we come over with the 12, it'll kind of adjust and fill. This is also 5 eighths here. Um, it is a party wall, it's a firewall next to another dwelling. So 5 eighths typically will also have deeper recesses than half inch well. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and overfill a joint and show you what that looks like. All right, so this is wide open and it's still not over, babe. So we went ahead and we ran this one wide open, which actually was fine because there is a huge shoulder. So this right here, you can see it all of this, all of that line right there, that's all a shoulder. Um, so what a shoulder is, essentially it's a high point in the board. So if I come here, that's rocking. That shouldn't be rocking right there. This should just have the recess right there and it should be totally flat. So what happens is you wind up having to split this out and then you also wind up having to split this out because it's creating almost like a butt joint right there. So what happens with shoulders is you wind up having to overfill on this side or not overfill, but fill more on this side and then you wind up having to fill down here to get rid of that rock. So shoulders are really common and what will happen is if you don't take care of these, they will actually show up looking like a flat or like a seam later because there's gonna be that hump and say you paint that, you're always gonna have that hump there, which is 
essentially what we're trying to get rid of when we are filling and when we are coating our joints. So what we'll do with this is we'll actually take it, split it, fill all of this recess right here, and then we'll run the top from about up here to there, and then we'll come down here and we'll run about here to there and try and get rid of that hump that's going on with that, that shoulder right there. All right, we got it to overfill. We had to switch to the different box. The, the level five just runs real tight. The North Star has more of a crown to it, so it's leaving more mud. So like I said earlier, we do adjust with our tools, how we're running, how much mud we're leaving. So this is wide open. That box was on no settings. It is just straight up. And I'm, they, I, you just know, you know it's over. That's over. That's way over. So this essentially will always be a humped joint. There's, you know, you can sand it flat if you so choose. You can do other stuff with it, but this is when people are coming through with skimming blades. And this is what happens when you don't run your boxes right and you're not checking. We're constantly checking, as you could see earlier, even with that one we were running, we were like, eh, three, we should probably go to a two. Even a one was okay with some joints. But it's really important that you are checking. And if you run a flat and it looks like this, for the love of God, stop. Stop and check your tools. Stop and, and adjust your numbers because this will always be crowned. You will just always see that because our bevel is all the way down there. That's our bevel right there. Actually, you know what? Let's do this right. I'll show you how much when we take off here. All right. So there's one pull. There's two. how much extra mud was on that flat than what it needed to be. That's insane. So again, make sure you're checking. You don't want to have to be sanding all this flat. You don't want to have to go through and split all of your butts out or all of your flats out because you've been overfilling. And it really, really is important. You really do not want to be leaving a bunch of mud outside of those bevels. Same thing like we talked about corner bead. You want to be feathering and gently layering on your mud, not jamming a bunch of mud on there and wiping it flat. So that's pretty much it for boxes. Make sure you're checking, make sure you're doing maintenance. Um, again, the numbers that you're running are all gonna be dependent on the tools, the board, the board thickness, even the brand of board can depend on what number you're running on. We found that certain brands have different bevels and also have more shoulders or less shoulders. So make sure you're just kind of watching, taking care. Um, you know, if you're running these right, you should not have to be following with any sort of knife, skimming blade, or any of those things. They should be leaving a really nice finish for you. So, hope that kind of helps. Boxes are awesome. They really speed up the process, um, but just make sure you're running them right and everybody will be that much more grateful because then they won't get a bad name and everybody can use tools and have fun with them. So, anyway, <laughs> that's it for me this week. Um, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and YouTube. I'm under Drywall Shorty, and I'll catch you guys next week.